This is a story about an understory. It's a story about how a whole forest can get carried in the mouths of ants. I'm Eleanor Spicer Rice, and this is Our State's North Carolina Naturally. Okay, we're gonna turn in here and we're gonna go up. Look at that tree. I think this is one of the prettiest trees in Raleigh. Look at her. Isn't it beautiful? Look how her branches come out. She is really good looking. It's natural to look up when we're surrounded by the tall trees. But today, let's look down to our understory, to our herbs, our wildflowers, our ferns, our fungi, and our insects. North Carolina's natural carpet is made up of heart-shaped wild ginger, which flows into the fragrant hyacinth in the mountains. Sweet little Betsy's dot the Piedmont with their deep magenta flowers, and trails of bellwort shoot up from the ground all the way to the coastal plain. These plants are just a few of the species that make up North Carolina's forest floor, our understory. A healthy forest needs a healthy understory. Here, roots and leaves hold water close to the floor, quenching the trees above and cleaning the nearby streams and rivers. The world underfoot determines the world above. This massive, splendid realm must first be carried in the mouths of ants. Let's see. Citronella ants. Look. Those are the males, see? They look nothing like the ants. And smell them. Look, they smell like citronella. You can sort of smell it just a little bit, not a lot. Oh yeah. They smell like citronella. That's no. Ants play an extremely important role in the development of this whole forest. They aerate more soil than earthworms. They keep all the forest pests in check by climbing up the trees and eating them above and below. And one of the most important things that they do is they plant the seeds of our wildflowers and our herbaceous plants, like this ginger here. Oh look, there's some wild ginger, look. And it's forming a trail over here. This is a good sign that we've got some ants that are dispersing their seeds. Many of our herbs and wildflowers need ants to thrive. When the plants produce seeds, they wrap them in a fatty, protein-filled cloak. This cloak smells like heaven to only one type of creature. Ants. The ants pick up the cloaked seed and carry it home. There, they eat only the cloak and deposit the seed in their trash pile, rich with nitrogen and other special ingredients to help the seed grow. Some ants even treat the seed with antibiotics to protect it from disease. North Carolina has more than 250 different species of ants that we know about that crawl through our lawns and in our forest. And they're each doing something special and something different to keep our environment running smoothly. Not every ant is created equal in our forest, however. We also have invasive species like the Asian needle ant that's out here surrounding us right now, kicking out our native ants. Eleanor's looking for some ants up there. She's right here. Get in there. Asian needle ants, those little suckers, look at that. The Asian needle ant has come in and kind of bullied other species of ants out of the way. We kind of uh, want our environments to not get too disturbed. When big disturbances happen, that equilibrium is difficult to maintain, it's difficult to come back to. Jeff Baum has a PhD in entomology, and like me, he spends a lot of time looking at the ground. He also really loves his mushrooms. This is a little Amanita, Lactarius mushrooms, probably Pelioma, Plumbio violaceus. It's an American Caesar's mushroom. I did training in entomology too, but I'm more a fungal plant guy. Uh, you got a PhD in entomology. Oh yeah, that's right. North Carolina has a great diversity of wildlife and plant life. You know, we are five minutes from a major city right now. Uh, we're sitting in a beautiful, little woodland that is teeming with life. We have a nice equilibrium here. We have a nice balance 
of fungus and plant and insect and other animal life that maintains these forests. But there are certain things that can happen, like as uh, the invasive species might come in, like uh, the Asian needle ant, and kind of push the other ant species out. We could lose certain plant species. They may become more rare and difficult to see in the, in the forest. Removing ants results in wildflower and herb populations dropping by more than half. In places where our ants thrive, so does the forest. So that is a massive tulip poplar, and that thing is probably a good 250 years old. And, you know, you start thinking about what Raleigh was 250 years ago when that was a baby. <laughs> That's pretty fun. North Carolina is it's highly ranked in the amount of forested area we still have. So uh, we're pretty lucky in uh, the, the wildlife and diversity we can study. So it's kind of amazing how resilient and beautiful this can be. And uh, these are things we can take care of to kind of help us take care of the ecosystem that supports us in the long run. Because we have mountain streams and waterfalls, sandy pine sands, and rich dark hardwood groves, North Carolina grows abundant with some of the most beautiful wildflowers and herbs on earth. Look down, see the flowers, look closer, find the rusty ballerina who planted her glorious patchwork about the size of a grain of rice, tending to her vast garden. This video is sponsored by the Southern Environmental Law Center. To learn more about how ants carry the whole forest in their mouths, Read the story in the March 2025 issue of Our State Magazine, or on our website using the link below. To see more videos like this, subscribe to the Our State YouTube channel.